Hello, welcome back to Oracle DBA tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to discuss about read to log file. This is an abstract picture of Oracle server, which is consists of instance and file system. And the file systems are of different types of file. And then we have already explained uh, in our last videos about parameter files, data files, stem files, control files. In this video, we are going to discuss about read to log files. So let's try to understand what is redo and why you need redo log files. So redo log files are essentially a transaction log of the database. That means by following the redo log files, I can create, I can, I can, I can take my database to a particular state. Let's let's take an example and then that will be clear what I, what I am what I'm talking about. Let's say I have my database files called one dot dbf okay this is one dot dbf and this is there in say disk one okay then i have another file in disk two and i call that one say r dot dbf okay in disk two i have another file called r dot dbf and then what I'm doing every time every day at 5 p.m. I am copying this one dot dbf to another disk called disk 3 x3 will be exactly a copy of one dot dbf at 5 p.m. okay so that means at 5 p.m. this one dot dbf on disk 1 and one dot dbf at disk 3 they are same Okay, so if this is the case, so let's say at 5 p.m. Monday, I copy this file one dot dbf to disk t one dot dbf, both are same. Then at 5:01 p.m. on Monday, what I am going to do, I am going to do an insert into table t some value, let's say five and assume that table t is inserting to this file called one dot dbf all right so if that is the case then what going to happen in one dot dbf i have modified you know i have modified something and then pipe is stored there so if i compare the one dot dbf in disk one and one dot dbf in disk three they are exactly same except that one dot dbf will contain a new entry that is five all right then on disk two on r dot dbf i'm going to have enough information that i can redo this insert statement at 501 so basically I keep some information and that information is enough to redo this statement. Let's say at 502 my disk 1 crashed. If my disk 1 crashed then 1.dbf is no more accessible. How do I get back? The first thing what I'm going to do I'm going to copy, I'm going to put a new disk. Okay, so let's say this is disk 4. Okay, I, I, first I'm going to do, I'm going to put a new disk to my, attach a new disk to the server. And then I'm going to copy 1.dbf to disk 4. But remember, this 1.dbf, whatever I'm getting at 502, I'm copying, will not have this right so what i'm going to do after that i'm going to read my r dot dbf and then start doing whatever happened after 5 pm after 5 pm at 501 pm somebody has inserted this thing right then i'm going to replay to in, in my database all this transaction logs whatever they are available in my redo log file right so by by doing that what i'm going to do i'm going to bring back this pipe which was modified before at 501 by by read by by doing that 
I'm going to have also 5. That means the 1.dbf on disk 4, whatever you are seeing at 502 after we recover, after we recover. Right. At 502 after we recover 1.dbf, this is exactly same what was there before the disk got crashed. Okay. So that is what is the use of redo log file. The only purpose of redo log file is to recover the database in case of a media failure. If I do not have this information that insert has happened, then I can always recover back to 1.dbf that was at 5. But I cannot get it back what happened at 5.01. Alright. So now this comes to the next question. The next question is that we are going to store 1.dbf here in one disk. We are going to store 1.dbf in another disk. So this is because of the backup and all this thing. Then we are going to store all this information about the redo log file. That means we are just doing it three times. Like the, the, the storage requirement, like basically just to st store this t is equal to 5, we store here and next day at 5 pm we are going to store here and also we are going to have this information that uh, we have inserted. That means we are going to consume almost three times. Is it worth it? Actually, we are not really storing the full information here. And also we are not storing, you know, if this is a 2 gigabyte disk, we don't need 2 gigabyte disk here. What we are storing here? We are storing here what is going to transaction log until the next backup point. That means on Tuesday, on Tuesday at 5 p.m. I am going to take another backup. That means at Tuesday at 1 at 5 p.m. the disk in this and disk in this tree they are almost same. So basically essentially I need this file to recover the incremental data that has occurred in between a backup time. That means if my database is going to fail on say Tuesday at 11 a.m. then I need first thing is the backup which is going to contain up to Monday. Then from Monday 5 p.m. to Tuesday 11 a.m. whatever the, the incremental transactions those things I need from the redo log file. So therefore, redo log file should not contain much data except that it will contain only the incremental data that is going to be from, from one backup to another backup. So that is what the redo concept and then redo log file is always comes in the, in the two. That means it, we, we need minimum two redo log file. The reason is that, so let's say this is the first redo log file. Oh, sorry, so let's say this is the redo one, then we have another log file redo two. Okay, so there are two redo log files. So whenever this transaction happens, a transaction log is created like this. Eventually, this redo log file is going to fail, and it's going to fail, then it's going to switch to the next redo log file. So when you're going to switch to the next redo log file, just make sure that it is first empty. If it is empty, then start writing. And so we are we are going to complete the redo log file. Eventually, redo log file two is going to be complete, and then we are going to switch. When we are going to switch, there are a couple of things we need to make sure that this redo redo log file we are going to rewrite. We need to understand if we do really need this information. If you do not need this information, then don't worry, then go on and rewriting. But if you need this information, first do a checkpoint, which we are going to explain you in next couple of videos. So do a checkpoint, so that checkpoint process is going to make sure that even if you lose this thing, then we are fine. And this, this switching from one to, one to another is called log switch. Log switch whenever happens, system begins to be a standstill. That means the transaction, if you are doing some transaction, it's not going to do for some time. First, the log switch is going to happen and after that, the transaction is going to start. 
that means you are in the middle of some insert you may not be able to insert because log switch is going on therefore it's always important to make sure that you size your redo log file according to your transactional needs we are going to discuss all those things in a, in a, in a essentially in a performance tuning class which I know very much in detail like you know, how to size and with a lot of different kind of scenarios but just for fundamental things that understand that there is something called log switch all right then another thing is there called archived redo log archived so what archived redo log file does is that it's going to archive all this data to another file which is called archived redo log file so that we can keep all this information there as well and this redo log file needs to be on a disk which has a fast read IO on uh, in the right IO because we want to write with a lot of information being written to this redo log file and you need a fast disk but whereas this archiver redo is not really required to be on a very expensive fast disk drive and we just keep those things and we need archiver in case of a scenario where both the, where the redo log file enough can you know when the, where the redo log files cannot recover the database to your last backup point in that case we are going to read from archiver to this is an optional process optional file and if you have enabled the archiver in your oracle database then only archived redo log file is going to come into picture otherwise you don't need that so essentially this is what is all about the redo and then these are the redo log file on my demo uh, system so which I'm going to show you right now so these are my two redo log files and whenever this redo log, log switch happen I can go to uh, this file which will tell me like you know let's uh, you know I have a, I have a file called alert.log and if I go there to Okay. So alert alert the log file is going to tell me like you know when the redo log file is control G. Okay. So it's what I'm saying is that so this is the current log was on redo zero two and then log switch happen and then it moves to uh, another uh, log file or redo zero one. Then once this is redo zero one is uh, filled, then it's going to redo zero two, and that is called a log advance, and this is called a log sequence. And this log sequence is going to be stored in the control file. All right. So this is how you know all these things going work together to make your database recovery possible.